So short term, we don't have a great conviction. However, if you're looking at a six to 12 month time horizon, we do think the stock can be meaningfully higher. If the stock has a good earnings number and a good outlook today, we'd be very comfortable buying, even if it moves a few dollars higher, because we do think it will start to move significantly higher from there. All right, but I know what you're saying. Don't get too excited uh, in the next couple of hours. <laughs> Got to take a longer, longer term view here. Absolutely. This has been a very treacherous earnings season. So unless you have a great conviction about a company, we would not step in front of earnings, especially the day of. All right. With that caveat, let's move on to a couple even more volatile names like Bumble, which reports after the bell. It's up nearly 80 percent just since its last report. It's beaten revenue estimates five out of the last six times and has risen on three of the last four results. Julia, what's the story here, especially given match group struggles? The story here is investors are waiting to figure out if Bumble has the same challenges as Match does or whether it is managing some of these broader pressures that we're seeing in the consumer economy differently. And this all comes on the heels of Match not only disappointing results, but also giving a lot of warnings when they were looking at guidance. So for Bumble, the number to watch is not just revenue, which is expected to go up um, about 18 percent, but also that paying user base. Analysts expect the company to grow to over three million total paying users. And the question is whether or not we see some of those same issues that Match had. So Match warned that people are not starting and to, to experiment with dating services in the same way that they did pre-pandemic. Are they able to draw new, year, new users and then get those users to pay? Are some of these inflationary pressures keeping people from maybe wanting to spend the money on this. And I wouldn't think David Bumble's a stock that you'd typically be interested in, but you're saying maybe in the long run, there's something to like here. Sure, it's a pretty expensive stock. So even though the stock is down for the last few years, it's still expensive and it's up 90% from the lows. Uh, if they have a good quarter and they keep the growth trajectory, we think for our growth investor, it's perfectly fine. If they have a weak quarter, it's been pretty volatile and we think that it's up a lot on positive expectations. So this one's going to move a lot tomorrow. We just don't have a sense which way. But if it moves to the upside, you think that actually gives you some long term confirmation that, it, that you know, in other words, it, it tells you something about the fundamentals being intact? It, it does. It would mean that they're outpacing match and, and we would feel comfortable buying in a better environment for it. If they disappoint today, we think that it probably has significant downside from the initial day or two move. So uh, if, if bad numbers, we would not step in. All right, Julia, thank you. Our Julia Borson covering both of those names for us. As we turn now to Canada Goose, they report before the bell tomorrow morning. Higher today, it's up 9% this month, but it's still digging out of a big hole. The shares are down 40% this year. They're 16% short interest in the float, according to FactSet. And we bring in Courtney Reagan with the story on this one. China, a big theme here still, Court? Absolutely. China is still a big theme, but I don't think expectations are very high for that region, Kelly, as you can understand, because of what's been going on with the sort of rolling lockdowns that the country has still continued to face with their zero COVID policy. So I don't think expectations are high for China. That being said, I think it's all in the commentary from Canada Goose about how the high-end consumer is holding up around the world. And I don't expect it to be disappointing, frankly. We've heard from Capri so far, LVMH, and Caring so far, at least in recent weeks, when it comes to the high-end consumer. And none of those names are really seeing any signs of consumer slowdown. I would point to the real real as sort of one area of weakness for that higher-end consumer. But again, that's sort of a, a secondhand higher end consumer. So that doesn't point out a lot of concern for Canada Goose for me. We know they do usually beat revenues. They usually beat their earnings expectations, but the shares can be very volatile in reaction. Still, Canada Goose, to your point, is digging out of a bit of a hole in its performance for the year, but has well performed, outperformed the S&P 500 since it last reported in May. So we'll see what it has to say, but really it's all about that high-end consumer, Kelly, and most of the time, it's not going to be inflation that hurts that consumer, but really more of a volatile equity market. And True. things have been a little bit more stable uh, lately in the equity markets, which I think does bode well for this high-end consumer. And you know, I know it's like 90s degrees in much of the country <laughs> right now, but pretty soon we're going to be buying these uh, big parkas. David, we'll give you the last word here. What do you think of the stock? We think it's a very powerful franchise, and it is at a reasonable valuation. So if they do well with the earnings again, we think that ultimately will recover a lot of its lost ground this year. So we'd be a buyer 
if they have good numbers, um, but we don't have any sort of conviction because there have been a lot of blow-ups on the apparel and retail side. So All don't right. step in front of this one as well. All right. Even though it's padded and cozy and downy. Uh, David Katz, Courtney Reagan, thank you both today. We really appreciate it.